Lael Brainer, the Fed vice chair, saying inflation has declined in recent months. But she says that despite the inflation moderation and the moderation in the economy, rates need to be sufficiently restrictive for some time. A slower pace of rate increases, she says, will give the Fed the time it needs to assess the data more closely. Inflation has declined, she said, but it remains high and it's going to take time to get down to the 2 percent goal. Financial conditions, she notes, have tightened considerably. She looks at the bond spread. She looks at real yields. So they've all come down. Recent data, she says, show significant weakening in manufacturing. Further moderation, she says, also in consumer spending. It's one of the first Fed officials to really take note of the lousy data we got yesterday. Uh, she says the drag on growth and jobs from monetary policy is likely to increase this year. Recent declines in average weekly hours and temporary help workers suggest the labor market is cooling and labor supply appears likely, however, to remain constrained. Wages, she says, are not driving inflation in a 1970s style wage price spiral. And she says there are tentative signs indeed that wage growth is moderating. Housing inflation, she expects to cool in the third quarter of this year. And then in a way that is a potential pushback on some of the ideas out there among other Fed officials, including the Fed chair. She says bringing down wages are not the only way to cure that problem of high core service inflation. She says there's other ways to do it, including with a broader decline of other aspects of inflation. That could bring down the part that the Fed Chair Powell is so concerned about, core service costs. Continued moderation, she says, in demand could cool the labor market without significant job losses. Brian, this is... I got to say, it starts off as a very dovish speech and has a lot of dovish stuff in there that makes you think she's going to conclude with a more dovish outlook on policy. She doesn't really have that in there, but she's one of the first Fed uh, speakers of, in recent days to take account of the bad data we've had recently and also to be looking at inflation on a three month annualized basis, which, as you know, has come down quite considerably. She doesn't mention 5% or higher in there the way other Fed officials have. Uh, and I don't know if this characterizes any kind of change on the part of the Fed. She is one of the, the, the three core Fed officials, uh, Brainerd and Powell and the New York Fed uh, president, uh, John Williams, are the kind of troika there that are the, th uh, the three people we watch probably the most closely of all. Mm. Um, but she's definitely on the dovish side of things. And the question, Brian, is whether or not this means a more dovish policy not specifically indicated in this um, in this speech. Yesterday, I tweeted out something about inflation. I forgot to put the word rate after inflation, so I took some crud on the Internet because it was like, no, you just basically said OK, because I said I was just coming back from the grocery store, and I tweeted out basically like, just because people say inflation's coming down, when you buy stuff, it doesn't look like it to the average person. So can you explain the disconnect right. between, because a lot of our viewers are like, I'm not seeing inflation coming down. Eggs are six bucks. They've got their housing, used cars, maybe down a, a touch, but still hot. Can you explain the difference between the data and the real world? Well, there's two things, Brian. The first is these sort of, what do you want to call them, marquee items. And, and I think gas prices, nobody knows better than you, Brian, are one of those marquee items that dramatically color our view of prices. I think eggs have recently been one of those marquee items, which is, been driven up, especially by what's happening with the avian flu. And those price increases have been dramatic. In addition, people are, are thinking about what prices used to be last year, and they still see them higher. And indeed, they are higher. What we're talking about here, Brian, and the reason why there's a disconnect is because it's this wonky notion of a second derivative. What we're looking at, what Fed policy members are looking at, what the street is looking at, is the rate of change of the rate of change. Is inflation now 5% mm. or is it 3%? So prices are still going up, but they're going up two percentage points less. And it's but, very hard to go to the supermarket and look at your bill and say, oh, it's the, up two percentage points less than it was the last The point month. you just made is the point I tried to make unsuccessfully, so then I tried to remake it, which is, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, and of course, the internet, so take it for what it's worth. But the idea that... The inflation data is coming down, but that doesn't mean prices are falling. It simply means the rate no. of increase is coming down for no. most things. Exactly. And you make a great point, Brian, because the question becomes whether or not we actually have 
some deflation, some correction of some of these things. And I want to point out one of the relevant aspects to this for investors is something that Brainerd points out in her speech today, which is this notion of profit margin. She notes that retail markups have been a part of what's been driving inflation. And she expects some of those retail markups to come down. When an investor hears re- retail markups coming down, they probably hear profit margins declining. And it is an interesting question for the future, for the level of earnings, for the amount of earnings, for the rate of earnings, for profit margins, as to whether or not those mm. profit margins come down and whether or not prices actually fall. It is a big part of the debate that Bob Bassani is talking about, that we're talking about more broadly here on CNBC for the future here, is what is the story yep. here in terms of bringing down profit margins and will prices actually fall rather than just the rate of change of prices falling? Because there's a big swath of people out there that believe almost all inflation is caused by corporate greed. They might have a point. We'll see. Steve Leisman, good stuff. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right.